This tag booklet was created out of inspiration from the book, The Art of the Fold, which I purchased on recommendation. There are a number of techniques that they cover within this book. This is the first one that I have tried. Now, this is a process video on how to create this book, but I'm also decorating it in the video. If you want to take a look in the description, I have highlighted the times that the actual process is taking place, and you can kind of skip through it if you want to decorate it on your own without any influence or input from me. My name's Peg, the channel 2 Old Crows Mix Media. Hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. Now let's get started with this book by gathering the materials that we need. And there are a number of cuts that we need to make to create the components. So first, to get started, we'll be needing the end sheets that will go inside the front cover and the back cover. Those are cut 7 and 5 8 inches by 3 and 5 8 inches. And we need two of those. Our covers, I've cut mine out of a K-cut box and I cut it 8 inches by 4 inches. The cover papers to cover our cover cut at least 9.5 by 5.5 inches. The accordion fold, I used rice paper and used a 9 by 12 sheet of rice paper and trimmed it to 8 inches. And we need 21 tags, 2 and a half inches by 3 and 3 quarters. Now the book did call for a 8 by 13 inch accordion, but as I told you, I util utilized the rice paper that I had on hand, which was only 12 inches long, and it worked just fine. Let's get started by decorating the cover. I'm utilizing parchment paint. And I'm just wanting to lay down a background. And I want a subtle background. That's why I've chosen that parchment. Now, as you can see, I'm running out of this paint. But we'll see if we can get our cover sheets completed. And now I want to spray some Distress Oxide weathered wood down onto my gel press and pull that up with my cover. Just to add a little distressing to that parchment. And we'll do that again. For the other piece. Now as you can see there is some additional color on there and I had tried a different color of distress oxide and it did uh, do more to color my my paper than I than I thought. So we're getting some variance here which I'm not overly happy with. I like this one, but not really liking the pinkish color that I had brought in with my first shot on Distress Oxide, so I'm just going to cover that up. Rather than cutting another sheet, I've laid down some raw umber. I'm going to hit that with some bubble wrap and the ribs of the cardboard. And we'll just make the back totally different than the front. Now I went to put some of that raw umber on the front as well, but I don't want it to cover it. So I laid a couple of splotches down, hit it with my bubble wrap, and pulled it from the press. And now I went to connect those two pieces of raw umber on that front cover, and I've pulled a bottle cap out and black paint, putting that on my gel press to pick it up. And just adding those circular marks to connect those two blotches of brown on the front. And just a smaller cap 
to add a little more noise there. And there, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's get these adhered down to those 8 inch by 4 inch pieces of that K-cup box that I cut. You can use chipboard for this, cereal box, whatever you have on hand. I'm utilizing Yes Paste to adhere this piece. And I like the Yes Paste because it, it doesn't dry as fast as other adhesives and it gives you a little bit of movement or a little bit of chance to move or position what you're working with. Let's get the back glued down as well. And now let's flip those over once they've dried just a bit. And I'm utilizing glitter glue here to fold up my corners and just wrap this cover around or wrap the cover sheets around that uh, cover board that we cut. And I'll do that on both. And now those are finished. And just to add a bit more noise to this, I'm going to pull out my gold Art Deco pen, get a, a little juicy, and splatter some gold dots across the cover and the back. Let's move on to the end sheets. These were cut, two of them, seven and five eighths by three and five eighths. We'll lay down some parchment once again on the gel press and see if we can get both of those printed. Now we're gonna be pulling up some of those original colors that we had used before. So you can see the browns pull here and I actually had uh, done a little test run in gold, so there's some gold that's pulling off of that press as well. And I like the way that looks, so let's cover up the white areas with the weathered wood Dispre distress <laughs> spray. I can't talk. And I think that's going to look good on the inside. I want to add some gold to the end sheets and I'm utilizing the Art Deco pen and just putting some asymmetric writing or intuitive writing or mark making, whatever you want to refer to it as across these end sheets with that pen. So I'm just thinking about something I want to say but writing it in an illegible way across the end sheet. So there we have both of those done. And let's glue them down with a little Yes Paste. And I'm just going over that with that um, little piece of rubber, that little rubber tool to make sure that it is making contact in all areas that I have, have it glued and checking to make sure everything is glued down properly. And once I have everything glued, I'm going to come back in with my liquid pearls and just put a copper dot around each corner. And I've used the copper liquid pearls and I'm just dotting each corner just to add a bit more to this. And now let's start working on these tags. We have 21 cut, two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. I don't think we'll use all 21, but it's always nice to have a few extra um, just in case we make a mistake or in case we have one that we just don't like. So I'm going to start these all with a parchment and the residue of what's on that press, which we're pulling up some gold, we're pulling up some raw umber, and of course we're probably pulling a bit of that distress oxide. We'll bubble wrap the raw umber on the press and just come back and dab the cards. I'm trying to create continuity here.
So we'll get all of these front and back colored with the parchment and the raw umber. So here they are, completely colored. We'll spray them. I have them all scattered out, and I'm just going to spray them all at one time with the weathered wood distress. And now to add some black to them, I'm adding oh, off to the side where you can't see black paint to my gel press and dipping that um, bottle cap in it and I'm just randomly hitting each card with the uh, bottle cap to add some circles. And get all of that done and now I decided to add some texture to them so I pulled out a bunch of different uh, emboss plates and took them all off and ran them through my embossing folder to add some dimension to each of these tags. And now I'm pulling in, I just purchased this foundry wax that Tim Holtz has put out new on the market, and I'm experimenting with that. If you want to see the other projects I've done with this wax, I'll link a couple of them here. I did a complete journal cover with the foundry wax and did a couple of altered playing cards. So here I've just kind of gone over. Um, the embossing is not a, a real 3D embossing. So you kind of get, when you rub it uh, onto the card, you get inside the emboss as well as on top. But I'm OK with that. It, it actually looks pretty good. And this wax um, it adds that metallic finish. To the cards. So here we have have them all done. I did um, 14 of them in two of the foundry wax colors, the uh, statue and gilded, and the other two in the, I'll link it here, I've forgotten what the names of them are, but I used four different foundry wax colors. I used all four that he has out on the market. One is mined, statue, gilded, and I can't remember the name of the fourth one. So now I want to add just a spot to do some mark making on each card. And I've pulled out a paper bag to add an area on each card to mark make. And I'm just cutting those slightly smaller than the card itself. I'll just glue that onto the back of each card. And now I pulled out some ink, Sumi ink in black, and I'm just mark making on each of these. Nothing, just random, whatever happens to come out of the end of that brush. And we'll just go through each card and you can see I holding the brush really loose and just not really thinking too much about it and just making some marks. And now to add that foundry wax to the back of the card, I wanted to get the marks down first in case I wanted to add some inside the mark making. Just dabbing a little bit on the back to create the continuity from front to back. So let's start with the accordion fold. I'm folding a 9 inch by 12 inch piece of rice paper in half, folding each end to that center fold we just made. And I will do that once again. I'm going to secure that fold and then fold it in half once again. So now we have 
the start of a nice accordion fold. Let's just tighten up each of those folds. And now we'll come back and fold each in half. So I'm folding up to that line, turning and folding over itself, back, over, and up to the line. So it's just a very simple way to create an accordion fold without um, any tools so to, to measure. So it creates a very symmetrical accordion fold by just utilizing a folding technique, if you will. There we go. So now let's get this decorated because this is what we are going to attach our tags to. And I'm going to utilize silver. So I've spread silver on my press. Let's get the front and back of this rice paper coated in the silver. little bit of gold and we'll let that dry and then we'll secure those folds once again so now we have all of our pieces decorated there's our cover our cold accordion fold and all of our tags so now we're ready to put it together I have some double-sided tape and I'm going to put to that end accordion fold. I'll just trim that off, flip it over and we'll do the same on the other end. We'll add the double-sided tape to that last little edge or to the edge of this accordion fold. I'm going to take the cover off of that tape. If I can get, there we go. And now we'll attach the accordion to our booklet cover to that eight inch by four inch piece of cardstock that we decorated. And there we go. And now let's put our back piece on. Get that lined up. And taped down. These accordions trained. And there. <clears throat> We're ready to add our tags. So we'll put a piece of that double-sided tape on the end of each tag and we will just set those in going to the right. And we will do that <clears throat> on the top row and on the bottom row. And then when we get ready to put the center row in, <clears throat> we're going to just go the opposite side of the accordion fold. So that tag will lay in the reverse direction. 
So we'll get these two rows in. I think this is the hardest part of the project, is pulling this cover liner off the tape. Of course, I keep my fingernails, no fingernails, cut to the end of my fingers just because I'm in <clears throat> paint all the time. I work in my shop on the weekends. I go through the manicure process on Monday for my work week, and then by the weekend... I pull the polish off and up to the shop. Now let's go the other way, other direction. So we'll just flip that over, insert that, going the other way. And I'm being very careful to line these up so that it is uniform when you unfold the book. You know, you don't want it jig-jaggedy. There we go. So now we have all of those in. And look how neat that is. I think, I, I love how this opens and it pulls and I bring these over and show them to my husband and he's like, yeah, whatever. You know, what's that for? I even showed it to the dog and the dog didn't even react. So. I'm, I'm happy to share it here with someone that truly appreciates the art of the fold. I also, if you noticed, and I don't think I videoed it, but I added a little bit of mark making to the front cover too to fill in that bottom space. You can see it here in the upper right hand corner of the illustration. But this is the way to put this tag booklet together. It, it looks like a difficult project, but it's actually very, very easy to create. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll make one of your own. So thank you for joining me and allowing me to share this process. I hope you enjoyed and will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I've put the flip through of a couple of more of these that I have made in the end screen here. If you would like to take a look at a couple of other renditions of this fold where I added some signatures, um, which is very easy to do as well. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. And I shall say bye for now.